the management team of uh, Growth Sellers and the main organizer of the event. The keynote speaker was Raghavan from Indigo and all the renowned speakers and the very able uh, team of different institutions, representatives from different institutions. Um, I'm truly honored to be here. I'm not sure I deserve to be the chief guest of a program like this. I'm not a trained manager having or have any formal education and training in management of people like yourselves. But what it also tells is um, that a lot of things depend on your uh, common sense, uh, diligence, and uh, real commitment on uh, bringing about change in what you do and improving and continuously striving on achieving certain results and being loyal to your principles, meaning the community in general. I'm, I'm talking about our society and the people. So I think um, uh, I'm truly uh, honored to be here again. Um, and it's great to see, honestly, um, when I started my professional life, I had uh, not much of an idea of how HR uh, is being dealt with, how they are trained, how should we deal with them in terms of grooming them, building up teams. Uh, I was kind of by default put into a managerial position when I started about two decades ago, in fact, more than that. It all, you know, I had to learn by heat and trial, by bits and pieces of, uh, you know, pieces of training, uh, re-educating myself. Uh, but I think over a period of time, you build certain uh, uh, values and principles and have an experience of how to build teams, create institutions, uh, not really create, but set up institutions and help them uh, grow. Um, and I'm truly happy to see that something like this is happening at the professional level. And I'm glad to note that uh, uh, the HR meet is happening uh, for last 12, 13 years, and it's the 14th series that uh, Growth Seller is doing. And it's great to see that uh, you all are taking these types of uh, courses and uh, building up your managerial skills. And the very fact that Nepal is recognizing the value of, of management as an independent um, speciality and uh, do that in a professional manner, which other countries have adopted long time ago, uh, it is a matter of uh, satisfaction and I think something that uh, I'm happy about. So, and I, I really can, you know, appreciate the efforts of, of Monji and his team uh, in doing this. And I think um, that something is lacking in our country. We have a lot of technical experts in a lot of institutions uh, with a gap in uh, bringing the experts together and trying to bring, bring best out of these technical experts because there is no, um, the right change to bring them in, but, you know, together and uh, connecting the dots by excellent management. I think that's something that uh, this institution and this campaign will will strive to to fulfill. So I thank you for taking this initiative and also achieving this much of success in last uh, decade plus. Um, I'm not going to take a lot of time trying to be smart in showing that you know there are components of management. You have a lot of uh, renowned speakers today to speak with you, interact with you today and tomorrow. I think it's two days program and you'll learn more about the nitty gritties of how to handle different situations in managing, building teams with them. Um, you could ask certain questions to me if I was in a panel. Unfortunately, <laughs> I don't think there is an opportunity for you to ask questions. I like answering questions. I'm a technical guy. I am a bullet point guy, as I say always. I, I have very little ability on narrating and elaborating on amplifying uh, the essays. So I, I would love to interact, but that's not possible. But I would, I would draw your attention in asking questions to the experts that you will interact today and tomorrow. Um, the way I see in a country like ours, um, like Nepal and other, you know, least developed countries or low income countries, the politics is in, you know, unstable. Um, there are a lot of uh, attempted, you know, influences from vested interest in politics and otherwise. And it's extremely important to have stable institutions and building institutions is as powerful engines 
of our economy and science and technology is very important. So how do we build institutions? And of course, that all is boiling down to that anyway. Um, and what are the factors that, that allow you to bring about adopt change? And my question through you to the next speakers, and I hope you would get answers to that. And I always try to find what's the right balance between adopting new concept, new idea, uh, versus sticking to the principles, sticking to the protocols, and refining what you've started. And a lot of times, our mid-level managers uh, try a new idea, new concept, a new, let's say, method in management or in an institution, and then they, they don't get results immediately. And the people get frustrated and say, well, it didn't work, let's change. And it's too often we see that the policy is being changed, the protocols being changed, even before we give them ample time to be tested. So I think that's a question, what's the right balance between trying to bring about new change in policies in institutions versus what is the importance of being consistent, diligent, trying, giving it time, giving full energy, full, you know, your, your um, uh, intellectual and otherwise ability. So I think that's, that's the thing that you'll have to kind of strike a balance uh, in, in getting the best results. And mind you, um, that in management, as they say, anything that brings about a positive change in our society is a science to study for management anyway. Anyway you do it, you just have to use the right ethical, scientific, and transparent tools. So I think that's, that's one question I would, I want you guys to kind of find out for yourself and ask your experts. How do we ensure that we have met certain quality assurance parameters versus what are the things that they allow us to get into this topic of quality, uh, total quality management or quality improvement? And a lot of times people get confused. And this improving on every day, competing against yourself, trying to be better on every day, refining yourself on every day what you do. You don't need to be a new person every day. To try and achieve something better, trying to do better to your clients, to your institutions and society in general. And through this different tools of total quality management is something that we need to understand. I hope you will get more clearer view of how do you do that through the experts uh, in the next couple of uh, days. And uh, something that Mohanji asked me to talk about is how do you build a team and how do you relate the executives with the health, the heart health, so to speak. And I'm not sure I can give enough time on talking about that because it's just a small aspect of what this is all about. Um, but I can, I can tell you maximizing, maximizing results of any institutions uh, has to come th through the team building. And I think there is a lot of interaction between this working environment and your health in general. And, and I'm, I'm a heart doctor. I think uh, Shivani was nice to introduce me uh, with some good words. Um, and I, I really feel that if you have a working environment in, in a place that you like, the job that you like, it does not become a work. It becomes a game, it's a joy, you achieve results, you continue to perform. That's a kind of positive cycle. Whereas if you are forced to do something that you don't like, you don't enjoy, you don't get results, and yet you're forced to do it, it's a torture on an everyday basis, and you would give up and people quit. And I think one of the most important things that management experts would be talking, I'm sure they would be talking, why would people quit jobs? Of course, our country has a lot of other reasons for people to quit jobs, and especially in the medical practice that I'm in, um, you know, people leave for better opportunities abroad, but that's a different confounding factor. But in a given consistent environment, how, why would people be unhappy uh, performing? So there is, there is a phrase in management in big institutions that you represent uh, this phenomenon called we, they phenomenon, right? So I want you guys to look into that matter 
um, today, tomorrow, and see how can you lower the bar of this we there phenomenon, if you understand what is that, is the most senior executives w would consider institution being theirs. A lot of times it's their investment, a lot of times they're paid well, they're seen as the leaders of the institution, and they, they, they and legitimately they tend to be the, the institution's representatives. And the lower on the ranks, the lower mid-level and lower level managers are uh, the workers. Uh, they don't own the institutions. They don't think they have the ownership in this institution. And they say, oh, they did this for us or not for us. So this we, their phenomenon is, is, is uh, an enemy to the growth of the institution. So how do you lower that um, bar of this we, their phenomenon? I think it's crucial so that everybody feels that they are, part, they are contributing. And, and I can quote you, which I don't want to get into detail, as I said before, but, but if people knew in your institution that they are making an impact to the institution, but not just to the institution, mind you, if they can feel that they are impacting their society at the bigger audience, there would be much more energy and commitment to work and give. And it's proven by studies, and I, and I sometimes read those literature, and it's very clearly written. So, uh, how do we make, pe make people engaged, being productive, and in, in bringing out results? And mind you, every single person matters. I can give you an example. My cleaner would impact the outcome of my heart surgeries. Let alone nurses, they are very important. They do a lot of work for us. Everything matters if you're really talking about quality refinements, improvements. So I think we need to value the efforts and the, the ability to influence the course of events uh, of everybody in the team. I think that will be the topic for a couple of days and I want you to reflect on this. How do you do that in your own particular teams? Again, let me tell you, there will be no new science. I can tell you right now. There will be no new science coming in next two days or two d years or two decades. It's all about re-looking at yourself. How do you achieve the best out of yourself or others? So this is what we're exercising here, right? I mean, this is what you're gonna hear. Um, as I said, anything that brings about positive change is a science in itself in management, right? Or, and finally, I don't wanna <laughs> keep talking long. Uh, finally, let me tell you, um, there is a health aspect to a working environment. Um, if your working team is great, you enjoy being together, working together for a common cause, um, you know, meeting certain goals together, and you enjoy achieving those goals, um, your adrenaline level and noradrenaline level, do you understand those terms? Those are the hormones produced in our body when there is stress, brain sends signals uh, to a deeper brain and uh, they start producing this, these chemicals. That will raise your blood pressure that will put in stress on blood vessels. I can even break down the endothelium, the, the inner lining of the blood vessels, and you can actually have, um, you know, in the long run, you can have heart attacks, increased chance of strokes. Um, and of course, the general well-being goes down, you have headaches with the BP going up, and uh, you know, all sorts of things. And especially those are at a mid-level who cannot make decisions, are always under the pressure of the superiors to achieve, but they have limited ability to produce results, is are under tremendous pressure, and they have this noradrenaline level high at all times. So one way to deal with that is break those cycles. You should be able to express, or if you are the boss, you should allow people to express, relieve their stress, relieve their levels of noradrenaline, let it go down to the base, and that will you know, keep you back in the shape and, and in the health status. And I tell you, there are a number of ways to relieve stress, and people can talk about managing stress in institution, in you know, top leader management or mid-level management. As I said, mid-levels are in the worst off position because, as I said before, they're under stress all the time, and they hardly can express openly and loudly. Um, one way I can tell you is, is do an exercise. Is 30 minutes to 45 minutes of exercise, you can do that within your, and in fact, one of the ways to do that is create a place where you can do that in institution itself, in the workplace itself. It may not be possible, but at least for yourself, 
you do an exercise for 30 to 45 minutes every single day, you break all these effects of noradrenaline or other harmful chemicals, all the stress matters, it breaks the cycle, it keeps you fit, it helps you lose weight, it helps you control the blood pressure, it helps you reduce your weight, of course maintain figure if you want. Um, that's one thing that I can leave you with that you all should do. And that's part of improving your own managerial ability, I tell you. If you feel fresh in the morning, you, you have sweating, and then go to work, you're a different person. If I don't do exercise every morning, and today I will have to catch up in the evening today, I couldn't do that because of this meeting. And then your work performance goes way up. If you don't do that, your performance goes down. Um, and of course, if anybody smokes, thinking that smoking kind of gives them a good pleasure, that's a myth. It's a damaging killer of our life. So don't get indulged with somebody who smokes. Um, reject smokers. Again, <laughs> and that's a workplace culture, by the way. You know, in America, the heart attacks are going down. In, in, in Nepal, the heart attacks are going up, so-called so lifestyle disease. Come on. Those who are educated, they understand the value of risk factors, lifestyle, they do right things, the heart attacks going down, age going up. We have increasing, um, you know, incidence of heart attack. And you know what? Of all the deaths that happen in Nepal, 20%, one-fifth of all of them are due to heart conditions. So it's an important thing touches everyone. 20% of this population has high blood pressure if you measure. So it's extremely important not to give that stress to your team members, of course, try and adopt a healthy lifestyle which will increase your productivity at work. And that can well be related to the productivity of your institution wherever you work. I think that's extremely important. And there may be other things that you could do, meditations. And that's great form of meditation for me are two. One, you enjoy your work because you don't suffer. You, you don't have all your hang-ups when you enjoy your work. And second is, you know, exercise. I play, and you could do something like that when every other stressors are cut off. So I think that, that's the only thing that I can do. I don't want to give too many tips that you would not follow. Um, but I would leave you with these two messages and hope your health will be strong and can contribute to your institutions, wherever you represent whichever you represent and of course contribute to our society and we are in such a crossroads where our country can grow very fast and or we can go downhill pretty soon. So I think a lot of that things depends on you and then finally I truly believe that our progress of Nepal depends on people like yourself and ourselves. It's not the politicians. I tell you politicians can damage but us who could always stand to build the institutions and nobody would break that down. Because we yield to the nonsense, institutions go down. So it's up to us to keep them going and, and you know, strengthen our economy and science and technology. Thank you very much. Pleasure being with you. Thank you. If I may request you to take have, uh, I mean, have an opportunity to listen to you. And of course, your presence today not only add impetus to the energy level that we all bring along, but also uh, gives a boost to our health concerns. And it's been a pleasure, not only a pleasure, but an honor to listen to you today. Uh, said this, uh, a very important formality, may I invite upon stage the chairman of the conference organizing committee, Mr. Mohan Oja, to do the honors of making this presentation to our honorable chief guest, Dr. Bhagwan Koirala, for sparing his very, very valuable time to extend these very enriching, encouraging, and inspiring words to the HR fraternity. This is coming with much uh, gratitude, sir, and an honor for the incredible and exemplary work that inspires all Nepalis and people the world across. Thank you once again, Dr. Kurala. Thank you, Monsir. Thank you, Samjana, ma'am. Thank you, 